Welcome again to another action-packed episode of Empowering Introductory Algebra. I'm Bob Young, Assistant Professor of Mathematics at Bavard Community College. Along with my excellent support staff of WBCC, we continue to bring you top-notch algebra lessons that you can work on anytime convenient to your busy schedules. Let's continue the journey. Now, as we left off in our last lesson, we were talking about factoring the greatest common factor out of polynomials. So let's go back to the graphic there real quick and just touch on that. And we talked about this late in the last lesson. To factor a polynomial with more than one term, take out the greatest common factor, divide each term by that greatest common factor, and put what's left in the parentheses. So what you end up with is the greatest common factor times the parentheses. Now in the next graphic here, we can check this by distributing the greatest common factor back through the parentheses. And write this in your notes now. These graphics are for your benefit. Make sure that nothing in common is left in any of the parentheses. You always want to make sure nothing in common is left in the parentheses. So let's go back to the example I finished up with at the end of the last uh, episode here. Let's straighten that out. We had a real nasty one with 48 and 240 in there. And we were thinking about numbers that would go in here. And we said, well, what if we didn't get it all? What if we missed part of it? I just took out a 12. 12, but when I took out the 12 and the x, which we found was in common, I was left with the 4x cubed minus 20, and I said, aha, there's still something that goes into each one of these, so I had to take the additional 4 out. So not only check by distributing it back through, make sure that in all parentheses there's nothing left in common here, and that will be a common theme throughout the rest of our factoring adventures. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and continue now. I call these type problems, when we factor out the greatest common factor, the bye-bye. Now, pe people are going, bye-bye? What's that mean, Young? And you could think about some old songs. Bye-bye, Miss American Pie. Well, I better not sing. I might scare people. But they do have a more contemporary one now. You've got the bye-bye-bye. You know, I won't talk about groups or anything. But... The bye-bye, the reason I call this a bye-bye is this is a binomial. This is one term. Now, I know it looks like a whole bunch of terms, but this is one term, and then this parentheses means these are multiplied together, leaving this as one big term, as is the two and the parentheses. See, so this is a binomial, and it doesn't take Einstein to see what they have in common. Gee, what does this have in common, I wonder? Yes, you can take out the 3z plus 1. Now, how many 3z plus 1s can I take out of each one of these? Sometimes I'll see students make a mistake. They'll put a square here. They'll put, well, there's two of them, so I'm taking two out. But each term only has how many? One. Don't try to take something where there's not something to take. Yeah. So one 3z plus 1 comes out. And if you want to, just like we did in the previous lesson, you can write that greatest common factor right underneath each one and then put what's left in here. Yeah. So what's left, it doesn't take a lot to see either. Those cancel out, leaving you with a 5z squared. These cancel out. We'll go ahead and just do a little chop chopping. Uh, we haven't chop chopped in a while. Let's chop. Yeah. So we'll end up with 5z squared plus 2. All right. Anything in common in here? No. Life is good. And I could check this by foiling it, but to check it, I would have to foil this, get an answer. Then I have to go back up here, distribute this through, distribute this through, collect like terms. But you would end up with the same thing in the wash. So you can actually check those as well. Next example, another bye-bye. I'm going to underline each term. And again, you can see a common what? 2x minus 5 is in common. So I'm going to pull the 2x minus 5 out. And I'm going to write that right underneath each term, 2x minus 5, very quickly. And we'll put what's left in here. What's left? Well, in this one, it's easy to see what's left. When those cancel out, you're left with the 7x to the third. But how about over here, Young? There's no number in front of the parentheses. Or is there? The old hidden one is there, yes. And remember, if you divide anything by itself, it always leaves you with what? One? What kind of one? Well, we had a minus there, so there's going to be a minus one left. 
So this is how you factor the bye-bye. You can take a binomial out and then put what's left.